It is an honor to have been chosen to give a, uh, make a few remarks as the guest speaker at the very first graduation for the Ecotech Institute. Um, I think I get to be the first one as a part of this celebration then to congratulate the graduates. And let's give them a really big round of applause for their hard work. So, so thank you very much, graduates, for the work that you put into it, for your own determination, for your ambition, for all that it took uh, to make it to today. Graduates, uh, I've given a few commencement speeches, uh, both as governor and prior to that in my public life, and so what I'm going to do is turn it around on you and say you probably have a lot of people who are here today, even people who are not here who you owe a debt of gratitude to and you would like to thank, and I'm going to ask you to stand up actually and thank the people who were part of your experience that helped you make it here today. Yes, you give them a, a round of applause. There you go. Okay, now you can have a seat. It's, it is a wonderful turnout that you have of family and friends and loved ones who have come to see this day and I think uh, for a lot of reasons, this is a pretty special day. It's interesting, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Ecotech Institute, your work as graduates there, and really about uh, this thing that has to do with the clean energy economy in America. Um, whoever chose this venue, I said, has kind of a wicked sense of irony because where we are today, once upon a time, was called the Denver Petroleum Club. Um, <laughs> So somebody was really uh, on the ball when they chose this, or maybe just lucky, but uh, there was once upon a time the, the, the two floors of this building, Denver Petroleum Club, and here we are to celebrate sort of a clean energy graduation. So I, w I was there when we cut the ribbon um, for that, well, when we really announced that the Ecotech Institute was coming to Aurora, Colorado. Actually, where your institute is is about a mile uh, west of where I was raised on a farm in Aurora. So I know a lot about Aurora and just really like the idea that the Ecotech Institute was coming there. Part of why I was elated as the governor of the state is because we really looked at the state of Colorado and said over the next 25 or 30 years, what are the things that we want to build out here? And then we said, what are the workforce demands? And one of the things that we understood that if we really were able to achieve our vision of making Colorado this leader in clean energy, including renewable energy and energy efficiency and natural gas, if we were going to do that, one of the things we had to do was understand how we were going to meet the workforce demands. So when the Education Corporation of America saw this particular space as a space that would be part of the future of our country and then chose Colorado to be there, we were elated because it was, from our perspective, a way for us as a state to look to an institution. It's now got 500 students in it and help us as a state really answer the question many people asked us is, okay, if you build this out, where are the people who are gonna work in the industry? Where are they gonna come from? And we think that the Ecotech Institute is one very important part of that. We have this, this theory, and I just gonna take you sort of a, a little walk along policy for just a minute. Um, it's not always as boring as it sounds. We had a theory that you could transform the energy sector in America, that you could do that in a way that responded to environmental challenges, that you could actually see job creation as a part of it, or what we called economic development, and you could do it with equity. You could protect ratepayers in doing it. So we called it the four E's, the new energy economy, which was about energy, about the environment, about economic development, and about equity. And we had this theory that you could do a lot in the public policy arena to try and embrace this transformation of our entire energy consumption and production. And so we believe that the four E's should be our operating principles. And so while I was governor, I signed 57 separate bills that somehow tried to advance this notion of an energy economy that was a clean energy economy or what we called the new energy economy. Now there are people out there, and I'm a board member, of a group that's national called the Advanced Energy Economy because as we've seen, this thing has grown, it's not new, it is, it is still um, growing, but it is now to a place where we're looking at advanced technologies making such a tremendous difference across the country. 
When I became governor, we only had 275 megawatts of wind on the grid. We now have over 2,000. That was a five-year period that we built up from 275 to 2,000. In Texas, they have 10,000 megawatts of wind and just permitted another really significant wind farm. On the side of solar, we had a, we had a notion that we could, in this state, build out a, giga, a gigawatt of solar by 2020 between what we call distributed generation and what we would call concentrated solar power. And we could use solar thermal power to prove, uh, improve thermal efficiency, and there's just a variety of ways we could build this out. We also said energy efficiency would be a significant part of how we thought about it, and we thought natural gas as well could be part of a clean energy economy if you actually extract natural gas the right way. And I know the Ecotech Institute's expanding their program to look at water treatment as a part of uh, the clean energy economy and the kinds of things that you need to do both with water and with air emissions to make it part of, uh, part of a clean energy economy, but it still part, can be part of this thing that is changing in America. We know that we're in a pretty difficult time, right? While I was governor, we went into the worst recession of the Great Depression. And that could be bad news, right, for anyone who's graduating. I have four kids between the ages of 19 and 26, and they're in that age where they're looking and saying, are there going to be jobs there? Interesting thing for your purposes. We were in the worst recession since the Great Depression, and the only part of the private sector that grew during that was the clean tech, clean energy sectors. So for your purposes, you chose right. You chose well. As my friend says, you're here to borrow money in the bank, at least it's not a restaurant, right? You chose sort of the opposite thing. You chose the thing that grew and has the potential to grow and grow and grow. We know that we have to do things, I believe, at a national level for there to be market certainty and investment certainty so this can get you know, bigger and bigger and bigger than it currently is. But, but just in the last five years, because we did a variety of things on the policy front, We've seen things happen in Colorado that, that really are pretty amazing. I told you about the build out of wind. As a state, we became the number one state in the country for per capita solar. So per capita, the number of people involved in solar, either from the research and development part of it, the manufacturing part of it, the installment part of it, and in all other sort of parts of the industry. So from stem to stern, number one in the country. We're number two in terms of overall volume. We're number two to California, and they have seven times as many people. So this is an industry where the workforce demands are significant. We think that because of the downturn, actually, it's dampened the real workforce demands. And then as the economy regains its momentum, we'll see even greater, uh, we'll see an even greater buildup of the need and the demand for people in the solar industry. We think energy efficiency is one of the biggest no-brainers there are out there in reforming an energy economy. I was just up in the Western Governors Association some time ago, and, and there was a guy from Simplot Potatoes. So they make McDonald's fried potatoes. And he said that as a company, they're saving $6 million a year on just energy efficiency measures with, with more to go. And they built this whole culture of people who are working in that company, thinking about ways to save money. But most good energy efficiency measures require some sense of retrofit, some sense of doing things a little bit differently, and being in that industry is going to give you sort of a leg up because you've done a curriculum that gives you the ability to really say, I can participate in growing a clean energy economy. In wind, I just I talked a little bit about the buildup of wind, but, but we, were, we were doing all these nice things as a related uh, public policy and we started vying for different companies to come here. The largest wind turbine manufacturer in the world is Vestas Wind Systems. And so Vestas decided, well, we'll build a manufacturing plant for wind blades. We've never built in America. Let's go to the place where, you know, they're doing a lot on the renewable energy side, Colorado. So they built their first plant here. And as you may or may not know, they added three more plants in Colorado. They don't manufacture anywhere else in the world manufacturing in Colorado, and then they demanded that their supply chain move here as well. So we have Vestas Wind Systems. We have the largest wind tower manufacturing plant in the world in Pueblo, Colorado. So these are, these are the kinds of things that if you say, you know, we're going to build it, then they do come. And what comes are jobs. If you look at all the different ways that people index states out there, and I know some of you are going to different places. You're not going to stay in Colorado. The jobs are taking you to other places. In fact, there are 
five of you going to Hawaii. But what five are lucky enough to go to Hawaii to build a wind farm? That is, that's not bad duty, by the way. Um, so I know you go to other places. I'll just tell you about Colorado one more thing. Everybody who looks at it says that we're either in the top three or the top five among all states in terms of our commitment to clean energy and what we've been able to do. We're number one in a variety of really important categories, but we're just outsized in some respects by states like California and New Jersey and New York, the states that wind up you know, one or two or three in many of these categories. But we are a state that has a real determination to build out this clean energy economy. And again, you get to be a part of it. I'm going to close by, by talking about something that's not necessarily about your curriculum or about the work that you're going to do, but about a bigger problem that I think is a problem that's global in scope where your work will make an impact. And that's on the issue of climate change. And I know the Congress is debating whether climate change is real or whether it's human caused. I don't really want to talk much about the debate because there's nowhere else in the world where they're debating that. Congress is the only institution in the world that's debating the existence. The people of Africa are not wondering if climate change is real. The people in China are not wondering. The leadership in China just imposed a five-year plan. It's their 12th five-year plan. And what they're doing is trying to increase the amount of non-fossil fuel energy seven times in an eight-year period. Seven times in an eight-year period because of the significant problems that they have with fossil fuels and with the kinds of emissions that they have from burning coal. But around the world, there's this global issue. And, and while it sounds bad, the truth of the matter is there are solutions in really reversing the effects of climate change and reversing the worst effects of rising sea levels, of rising carbon levels in the air, of, of deforestation, a variety of things that we see are impacts to it. There are solutions. And guess what? You're a part of it. You're a part of that solution because you made this professional commitment to being part of an industry that's about clean energy. There's a variety of things we have to do as a world and as a globe. And as governor, as I talked about this, around the world, people would say, yeah, but the United States has to take a lead. And quite frankly, they're right about that. But we believe states can take the lead as well and do a variety of things. There are 220 million Americans who live in a state where there's a renewable portfolio standard. If you just took those states and carved them out, it'd be the fifth largest country in the world. There are 220 million Americans, 240 million Americans, who live in a state with an energy efficiency resource standard, saying let's lower our energy usage and therefore lower our emissions. Fifth biggest country in the world, if you divide just all the states that have energy efficiency resource standards. So the fact of the matter is, there's a lot that's happening in the United States, and you can see in our emissions profile, decreasing and decreasing, and, and needing to decrease even more rapidly, but guess what, the answer, the solution, is the thing that you now enter upon. The industry that you now make a professional commitment to is actually an answer to that. And for that, I thank you. And I thank you beha on behalf of a lot of people in a lot of places around the world. So God bless you in all that you do. Good luck in your employment going forward. And again, congratulations for making such an important professional commitment and an academic commitment to the Ecotech Institute. God bless you.